production in Croatia's Neretva Valley is big business. Around 90% of the people in this region are involved in the fruit industry, producing over 70,000 tons of the main crop, the mandarin, for domestic and international markets every year. But there's a problem, the Mediterranean fruit fly. This pest lays its eggs in the fruit, and when the larvae develop, they start to feed, damaging the pulp and the livelihoods of the farmers and exporters. The Mediterranean fruit fly is a pest of the huge economic importance for this area. The reason of this is because uh, the Neretva Valley is producing over 90% of the mandarins of, of the Croatia. And from this total production, more than 70% is exported to the countries, which don't accept the residues of the pesticides on the fruit, but also because of the quarantines, quarantine reason, don't allow to import fr infected fruits. Around a third of the fruit is currently being destroyed by the flies. So Croatia needs to find a way to produce pest-free fruit without the use of insecticide. They're doing this in cooperation with the International Atomic Energy Agency and the FAO, or Food and Agriculture Organization, using the sterile insect technique known as SIT. This method works by using radiation to sterilize male flies that are produced in mass rearing facilities. They're released into the wild, where they breed with females, who in turn produce no offspring. So the wild fly population is suppressed. We still don't have the complete data, but what we have seen in cooperation with Croatian Center for Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs is that the percentage of fruit flies in the areas treated in comparison to the untreated areas differs significantly. That gives us the right to assume that with a larger, more structured use of this technique, we could realize significant results. Flies are trapped in the release areas to see if the sterile flies are outnumbering their wild counterparts. This is done using ultraviolet light to identify the wild from the sterile flies, which are marked with a special dye prior to release. Fruits from the SIT area and from those not involved in the project are screened and compared for levels of infestation. And to check whether sterile males can compete with their fertile counterparts, flies are observed while mating in field cages. The farmers are happy with the results. I think SIT is the only long-term answer. It might seem expensive at the start, but if you explain it to the farmers, they will gladly accept it, even cover part of the costs. I think it would be better if the Ministry of Agriculture would get involved and coordinate with distribution centers and exporters. Me as a producer, I'm naturally interested in a healthy product, one without fruit fly and one without pesticide, so the fruit can be sold anywhere in Europe. The Mediterranean fruit fly is not just a Croatian problem. The fly is one of the world's most destructive pests and can be found in fruit growing regions all over the world. There are other projects in other parts of the world like Guatemala, all Central America too just to create pest-free areas or low pest prevalence to allow to export to uh, markets like Japan, US, uh, uh, Chile just turn with this technique in the northern part of the Chile a few years ago turn uh, a, a, a country free of the Mediterranean fruit fly which give them enormous advantage to reach international markets. Croatia is planning to increase its mandarin production to around 150,000 tons in the next few years. If the sterile insect project continues to be a success, this will mean less fly damage, a healthier product for the consumer, and a brighter economic future for the people in this region. This is Josna a cassava processing factory in central Ghana. 
It produces local, affordable cassava flour, which is helping to reduce the country's dependence on foreign produce. Ghana currently imports over $1 billion worth of food annually, produce which is particularly prone to price hikes. Here at Josma, business is good, but Josma wasn't always so successful. Just a few years ago, its owner was struggling to produce enough cassava flour to supply her local village. Janet Jemai Kesi. We're doing it on this very small scale, producing about one bag a week. And then our tip came my way. RTIMP is a government initiative run in partnership with the UN's International Fund for Agricultural Development. It helps farmers to increase their production and develops market opportunities for that produce, which is where Janet's business, Josma, came in. They came and saw what we were doing here. They encouraged me to continue. That encouragement included installing new equipment, training processing staff, and providing Janet with links to buyers across the country. From one bag a week, Josma now processes seven bags a day. So it's about 35 bags a week. So you can imagine the improvement in a lot of local farmers who also were lost just as I was lost, found this place as lifesaver because they could have somewhere where they could send their cassava. Farmers like Elvis Apoku, Elvis's cassava is helping to pay for his son's education and has financed a number of off-farm activities, such as his wife's small shop, which she opened in the village. In the past, cultivating cassava and selling it was a major problem. Now, I have hope in farming. And optimism is high at Josma too. In fact, the company has been so successful that Janet is currently expanding her operation and shortly hopes to double her output. We're projecting we'll become quite big. In five years' time, we should be a very big company. Elvis too has plans for expansion. God willing, in three years' time, I will have progressed. I hope to expand my wife's shop so that the benefits will trickle down to her extended family. And I also hope to be in a position to employ a few extra people to help me in my daily work. That's my target. Increasing employment, business expansion and higher levels of food production. All targets which will make the local population less vulnerable to food price fluctuations in the future. I'm Declan McCormack for Hungry Planet. This is what's left of Likungole, once a bustling village in South Sudan. Those who managed to escape the violence here several weeks ago have been hiding fearful deep in the bush. Now, cautiously, they're returning, weak and hungry. All the houses were burned down and everything has been distracted. We only remain with nothing and we remain with only trace, there's nothing, there's no people, and the people who are now coming, they are civilian, but the townies are ran away. Some of them were killed, and few of them, they are now in Bibon. So we have only few civilians who are just coming from the bush. The Likwangule of today is now bush, is a desert. Tens of thousands of people have escaped similar violence in remote areas of Jongle State. Among the survivors, women and children, scarred by their ordeal. Many survived by eating wild fruit and leaves. The first life-saving food rations arrived by air in this remote area of South Sudan, enough to feed 40,000 people for 15 days. The atmosphere looks quite hectic, but I can also see that the, the people are coming out from the forest and just looking at their faces and talking to the officials, people are starting to feel that there's help. Help is finally arriving and people are looking more positively to the future. WFP has now reached 80,000 people who've been affected by the violence. 
They receive rations of sorghum and cooking oil. WFP is also providing specialized nutritious foods for children under five to prevent damage that malnutrition can cause to their brains and bodies. As well as providing emergency food, WFP is also working with local communities over the longer term to halt the spiral of violence and hunger and help people to rebuild their lives.